Okay, Blue Monk. So I spoke with all three of you, had a lesson with you. You all sound great. Um, I'm really excited for you. So let's kind of dive into some things that I think are going to help you. So this is the type of thing that I do um, when I'm practicing improvising over a tune, learning the harmony, learning how, just how to play the song, how to connect to the song. I, I boil it down to its most simple elements. And I think this is going to be helpful. I think I spoke to all three of you about this. This is going to be helpful not only for your improvising, but also for playing the head and the etude. And we'll talk about different ways that this can be helpful. But the very first thing, and if you only take one thing from this video, this should be it. Play the root motion to the tune. So uh, what I mean by that is your charts have chord symbols on them chord symbols um, above each bar there's a letter now for your etudes it's it's just one letter for most things and there's a seven here or there we're just going to assume that all of them are seven meaning dominant seven so that's a certain type of chord it's a major triad with a flat seven so that may or may not mean much to you at this point in time that's not it's not really necessary that we get too far into that. To play the root motion, you play literally just the letter that's written there. That's the lowest note in that chord if you were to stack it in thirds. So that's what the bass player would be working with and starting with. That's kind of what anchors the sound of the song. So if you practice that, not only are you setting yourself up to know where to sort of base your improvisations out of, but also you are teaching yourself the sound of the, of the accompaniment, if that makes sense. So you, as a, as a melody instrument, are familiarizing yourself with the ways that people are going to play behind you. Now think about that for a second and think about how valuable that might be. If you're playing along with the play along and you've got you've got drummers ding, 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 doing all this stuff that seemingly like against the time or something, the bass player's moving all around, ba ding 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 do ba ding ba. The piano player's playing odd fill rhythms, things like that. It can get kind of overwhelming, right? But if you know, if you know the root motion and you familiarize yourself with that accompaniment um, or where that accompaniment's coming from is more specific to what I'm trying to say, then what you do is you, you, wind, up, um, you wind up in a situation where if you feel lost, all you have to do is just take a moment and listen. And... and your ear says, oh yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, like I recognize where I'm at. You just take a second to listen and you say, well, okay, I recognize where I am in the tune. And then you can carry on. So here's what that'll sound like. I'm gonna play with a metronome. I'll have the metronome in my ears. You won't hear it, but that's okay. I'm gonna play the root of each chord so that's the letter that's written above the bar. And in your fourth bar, you have two Gs written. It's just G for the whole bar. Uh, I'm speaking about alto, so for tenor, you have two Cs written. Um, so I'm going to be playing three notes, basically. For alto, I'm going to play G, C, and D. And for tenor, I'm going to play C, F, and G. All right? Um And each of those is going to last for a full bar because it's, it's going to fill up the bar just as it's written on the, on the chart. Mm-hmm. 
So you can hear that I looped that. Now, this is not something that you have to do, but I am suggesting that you record yourself doing this, either along with a metronome or even better, record yourself doing that over the play along so that what you wind up with is the play along plus you playing that on top of it. And then you use that as your play along. Practice your uh, your the head to the tune and your etude choruses along with that. Even practice your improvising along with that. So the next step is to begin stacking the rest of the chord on top of that root. So we're going to add one more note. If I were practicing alone with a metronome, I would play each of those notes that I already played, and then I would play a third, a major third above that. Whether or not that means anything to you is immaterial, because I'm going to tell you what they are. So for alto, your notes, your roots are G, C, and D. The third to each of those is B, E, and F sharp. So G and B go together, C and E go together, and D and F sharp go together. So feel free to pause and play that. It'll sound like this. <laughs> So for tenor, your notes or your chords are C, F, and G. So the thirds to those chords are E, A, and B. So for C, E is the third. For F, A is the third. And for G, B is the third. Okay, that sounds the same as what I just played. Feel free to pause the video and try that out. So if I were playing with a metronome, I might go one, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Excellent practice. So you're again, you're teaching yourself what the band might be doing behind you. Uh, and you're also teaching yourself some really good notes to play at that point in the form. Notice I just played 12 bars, if you count it out. So, um, so literally, when I played those notes would be a really good measure to play those notes in if I'm if I was improvising. Okay, so uh, the way I do that, though, along with a play along, maybe one that I made, is to just play the third alone since I already have the root. So I'm going to show you what that sounds like. So you can already hear that it's starting to sound like something. So uh, normally, if I were if I were really deeply learning a tune, I would go ahead and play the fifth as well. So put another third on top of that. So in the case of G, which you both have tenor and alto in your uh, in your 
tune, G and B, right, root and third, and then put another third on top of that, D. So third meaning skipping notes. G, skip A, play B, right? Uh, B, skip C, play D. G, B, and D, right? Um, I'm not going to do that for the sake of time here because the fifth is a little bit less important. It doesn't tell us much about the chord. But I am going to play the seventh, which would be a third above that. So G, B, D, uh, skip E, right, and play F. So the thirds for, I mean, sorry, the sevenths for alto are F. So for the G chord, it's F. For the C chord, it's B flat. And for the D chord, it's C natural. So notice like um, an octave, oct, that's eight, right? Um, a seventh is one less. So for the G chord, the seventh is F, that's one less than the next G. Does that make sense? So G all the way up to F, almost to G, which is an octave, right? Almost to eight. For C, almost to C, but B flat, right? And for D, almost to D, C. Um, and then for tenor, uh, again, C, the seventh is B flat. F, the seventh is E flat. And G, the seventh is F. Again, if I were playing with just a metronome, I might stack that whole chord. I might go one, two, three, and play quarter notes. One, two, three. <laughs> So that's all four notes of the seventh chord, root, third, fifth, and seventh. That's a really good thing to know. It tells you a lot that the blues scale doesn't tell you. Not to knock the blues scale, as I'll demonstrate in a moment, is excellent. I'll, you know, you can sound really good with it. Um, if you mix that with this information, things start to really take shape. Okay, here I go. I'm just going to add the seventh on top of those. So you can hear it really starts to sound like chords, right? Take a listen. Hear what it sounds like when I play the, the uh, melody.
So if you practice those elements of the harmony, especially the root motion, if you do nothing else, make sure and do that and do it along with your play along. It's going to tell you a lot that, uh, that only you can discover. You know, I can't tell you how meaningful it's going to be to you. Um, or let me say that differently. I can't tell you how it's going to be meaningful to you. Um, but it will, I, I can, I can tell you that it will. Um, I think that's it y'all. Uh, I hope that you, I hope that you get something out of this and I hope to hear from you soon. Please send me an email and let me know how this goes for you. Talk to you soon. Bye.